Hi friends, hello, happy Friday. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. I'm Lisa Hetrick. I have a really fun card tutorial today. Actually, not really that much of a card tutorial as much as it is a color mixing tutorial. We're gonna do a little Craft Your Joy Lab today. So um, I think it was last week and forgive me because I can't remember who asked, but someone had asked in the chat if I could share color mixes for burgundies and maroons. And it got me thinking about color mixing in general because we've been talking about it quite a bit on this channel lately. And I thought, hey, let's do it. Let's have a little lab experiment. So, okay friends, so I see a couple people popping into live, today's live. Hi Dawn, hi Cherie. Oh, Dawn just asked if, um, do you paint to this beautiful music? I do love it. It is such a great little tune. Um, it's called Magical, I can't remember what it's called, Magical something. Magical Journey, that's what the music is called, uh, that I licensed from an artist. Um, Peggy Lucas, hi Peggy, hi Susan. Hi Janice, she's saying good morning everyone from rainy Orlando. Yes, so... We finally got some rain in Maryland. Um, it's been raining for the last three days and we've desperately needed the rain. So I haven't minded it so much, but you know, it, it's getting a little gray. I could use myself a little sun, right? Hi, Tony from Colorado. Okay, friends, so we are popping in. I see friends popping in. I also, I, um, if you're on my email list, I made a huge error in my email yesterday and said that we would be coming on at 1130 today and it's really 11. So my mistake. So if you're catching this on the replay because I got the time wrong, it was me. So, okay, friends. So we're going to dive in because I have this really fun watercolor tutorial today. If you have questions along the way, if you're new and you have questions along the way, just pop a cue in the chat. If you see my gaze kind of heading over in that direction, that's where the comments are. So I'm taking a peek at that um, along the way. So if you have questions, pop a cue in the chat so that I can answer them along the way while we're doing the tutorial together. And again, today's tutorial is all about mixing maroons. And we're going to do it two ways not four ways, two ways. We're going to do it two ways. We're going to do, I'm going to show you how to mix up burgundies and maroon water in watercolor with watercolor paints. And I'm going to show you how I do it with Gina K inks using cherry red. Um, yes, from the Gina K line. So I'm going to show you a couple different variations of that. And let's just go ahead to the down camera. We are going to make, our end result is we're going to make this card using the new Showers of Blessings stamp set that just came out with Gene K Designs, my stamp set. So I'm just going to do a quick run through of the supplies. Now, the supplies aren't linked down below in the description yet, but they will be afterwards. Um, if you're interested. So I'm going to do a quick run through. Here's the new, my new stamp set with Gina K Designs called Showers of Blessings. We're going to be using the Big Honkin' Bloom and this little bitty leafery. We're going to use the Sentiment Showers of Blessings, I think, and maybe some of the rain. I haven't decided. Um, but today we're going to use the detail part that goes inside of this stamp as well. We're not going to make an umbrella today. We did that last week. Um, we're going to just have some fun with blooms and contrast and really focus our attention on the creating this burgundy like color, this maroon like color in the bloom. Okay, now the watercolor paper I'm using is Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. It's cold pressed paper. I love using this paper for our paper crafting projects. I'm also using Jelly Bean Green cardstock and some layering white cardstock from Gina K. So again, that'll all be down below in the description. I've got some glue. I also have some sequins. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze. And I have some brushes. Today I'm using some Princeton Heritage brushes. And the reason why is 
Um, these don't hold as much water as my silver black velvet brushes. So I want to really control what I'm doing today because we're going to be using these three Gina K inks, cherry red, blue denim. Also, I've got um, the jelly bean green. No, that's not jelly bean green. That's grass green. And I have obsidian that I'm using for our base for the flower. But because we're using inks and we're using the re-inkers, I really don't want my brush to be super, super wet, hold a lot of water. I want to really control what's happening. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we dive in. Okay, that was an unexpected sneeze. So let's go ahead in and start to, to talk about um, making maroon colors. Now, first I want to talk a little bit about watercolor pan sets. Okay, let me just pop this over here and just show you. So here, eat, got a little bit of color. So this is... This, let me just turn it this way. This is a palette, a large studio palette, porcelain palette that I have of Da Vinci watercolors. I just want to draw your attention to Paraline Maroon and Alizarin Crimson. These two colors and these two color names are very common names in watercolor sets. And you're going to find that they have that maroon and burgundy look and feel Um shade that you're looking for now but if you don't have those in your watercolor sets because often we're starting off with some basics i'm going to teach you today how to mix that color and make that color but i wanted to kind of show it to you um here it is again so if you take a look at that paraline maroon you can see it's a really nice dark burgundy now in preparation for today and playing around look at all the different mixes i made um, to just try to replicate that perline maroon look um, and also do it in Gina K inks. So we're going to walk that out today and talk about how you can do that. And um, yeah, I hope you find a lot of value in it because it's going to be super fun. So let's talk a little bit first about, excuse me, to blow my nose sorry about that on a live when you sneeze you definitely have to blow your nose okay talking about mixing maroons with watercolor so it's a lot easier than one would think it is what i would call five parts red one part blue and you can make it so i have a red this is a da vinci red watercolor and then i have an ultramarine blue here and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Now, I also have my water today. I've got a, two, two vessels here. So one for dirty and one for clean because these colors are super staining that we're working with today. And I'm going to end up making <laughs> a huge mess in color. So I'm going to clean off my brush here and get started on the reds and just kind of show you. So I've got my pan set here and I'm digging in deep here and getting a lot of pigment on my brush. Now, this brush doesn't hold a lot of water and that's why I'm using this brush versus my silver black velvets. These hold a lot of water. And the reason why is I want to be able to get a lot of pigment on my brush and get a lot of pigment, get a lot of this red down on my little porcelain dish here. So this is what we would call a consistency of a whole milk. So it's a lot of pigment, very little water. Okay, let me clean off my brush. So knowing these things, knowing these little tips, like which brushes hold a lot of water versus brushes that don't hold a lot of water, um, is kind of, is very helpful for techniques like this, especially when you're mixing, when you want more red than blue. So I see some more people popping in. Hello, hello. Hi, Maria. Popping in from Carmel, Carmel, Indiana. Catching the live from the beginning this week. Woohoo! That's cool. 
welcome, welcome. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a little bit of the blue and not as much blue. Now this is ultramarine blue, but I don't have a ton of water. And I'm just going to put a little dot inside there. So it's sort of five parts, you could say five to one. A lot of pig red pigment, very little blue. And this is where we're gonna start. Clean off my brush, because I want it super clean and not as super wet when I start mixing these two together. Now, you can start to play with this a little bit. I feel like adding that blue in there, I'm gonna add this right here so we can see what we've got. It's kind of a nice maroonish, burgundy-ish. Red and blue, here's one of the mixes I made. It's still a little on the red side, right? So I was being very conservative at first about what, how much of the blue I put in. So let's go ahead and just take another little swipe and be conservative again. And this is kind of how color mixing goes until you get the color. Just drop that in there. Oh, love it, love. Okay, not so much water. I don't really want to water this down. I really want a good concentration of that color there. I'm going to add a little more of that blue. And what I'm trying not to do is go purple. I'm trying not to make it go purple. I'm trying to just get a little bit more of an intensity of that maroonish color. And I'm, I'm digging that. Now watch what happens when I go too far with it. Brush, cleaning off my brush and really, see how I'm just rolling it here? Rolling it right there at that ferrule just kind of helps get off that extra water. I'm gonna dip into this ultramarine blue a little bit more. I need just a smidge more water there. And see, if I add more blue to this red, I'm gonna to start to turn this purple. So when you have an even amount, see see how I'm gonna get purple? I'm gonna get that beautiful violets color because red and blue will make violet, but red and blue will also make maroon and burgundy. So super fun. Oh, went to the wrong well. Super fun. So let's do that again, just one more time. Our con to get that, so there's my blue. So even parts of blue and red will give us that violet color, that beautiful purple, purple color. Now you probably have purple on your palette, but if you have a small palette of only like three colors, they're primaries, which are like the ultramarine blue, the, Divin the red and a yellow, you can easily mix up the colors you want. But most, you know, <laughs> Clearly, I don't do a ton of mixing. I do mix a lot, but clearly I love all the watercolors, right? You, When you're starting out, you start to, you get a little set of 12 or maybe a little set of 24, and it's got some really nice colors in it. And then you start to play with those and, and experiment even more. Okay, but we're just kind of going back to basics lately in these tutorials, and I hope you're finding them super valuable. Okay, lots of red. So lots of red. I'm going to bring that up so that you can see that concentration. See how it looks pretty opaque? It's because I got a lot of red there and very, um, very little water. So it's got that whole milk consistency. Clean off my brush, kind of get some of the excess water out. Dip the tip of my brush in that ultramarine. I'm just going to drop that right in the center so that you can see it. So it's like five parts red versus one part blue. I'm gonna clean off my brush, get it nice and clean and dried out. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and mix that up and kind of play with that mixture a little bit and see what we get. Take a peek. A little more on the red side. I wanna come in, so that's being conservative. Come in with just a little more of that blue. Oh, I think I went too bluey. Too bluey. Let's see. If you feel like you went too blue, you just add a little red back in. Oh, I think that's going to do it. That's going to do it. So when you're mixing your watercolor 
paints or pans. It really is about how much you're going to go back and forth with how much color you're putting in. That's still a little too red. I am being really conservative in this second go round. There we go. And it's kind of like, it's magical to me, like what you can do. Now I'm getting more on that maroon burgundy look that I'm looking for. Oh, I love it. Now I want to show you, I also want to show same red, a little bit of a darker blue. This is a Prussian blue. You can achieve a different, a deeper, darker maroon. Love that. Maroons and burgundies. Okay, so that's mixing them up with our pans. Now I want to talk about inks because this is where the question came up. For people who have who wanted to achieve those mixing maroons, that maroon color, and they wanted to achieve it with their Gina K inks or the inks that they have in their line, in their stash. So let's go ahead and move these pans out. I'm gonna clean off my palette here a little bit. And by palette, I mean plate. This is just a really fun square, uh, I guess a condiment plate or dinner plate. Yeah, it's a plate. I picked it up at Marshall's or TJ Maxx, one of those places. And it was like a set of four porcelain plates for like three bucks or something. It was hardly anything. I put these little felt pads underneath it so that when I, when it's on glass, it won't scratch. But this is a really, really fun palette to use. Okay, now let's talk about Mixing maroons with Gina K inks. It's a same kind of concept, just a tad bit more complicated. Because when you're up, um, ah, more people popped in. Hello, Denise. When you're mixing up colors with dye inks, and specifically the Gina K inks, and I would encourage you to use the formula that I'm talking about to you talking with you about today let me just pop my head back up and for some reason I'm like all the way over here I would encourage you to use the formula that I'm talking about today with whatever inks you have in your stash whatever brands and experiment um, I really enjoy working with the Gina K inks because they're really super transparent and they have so they have a lot of watercolor properties in them so Okay, but one thing I wanted to share is that I'm getting, I'll get a little bit of a different kind of result with the inks versus paints. And the difference is dye-based inks, inks have dyes, paints have pigments. Okay, so they have pigments that are finely ground and put, um, made into paints with a binder, either gum arabic Honey, there's lots of different kind of binders. This particular brand of Da Vinci is gum Arabic, I believe. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's gum Arabic. But inks have dyes in them. And the Gina K inks specifically also have a smoothing agent in them. So it makes inks, when you're mixing them, react a little bit differently. So you can have a happy face and a smiley face, depending upon what you're trying to achieve. But I'm going to show you how we get the mix between blue denim and cherry red the same way that I got the mix with the paints. Okay, first, I've got the cherry red reinker because I wanted to work with the reinkers. It's very, very intense. I'm going to put two drops. One, two two drops down on to my um, porcelain plate here. Super concentrated. I have blue denim and I'm gonna take a big chunk of the blue denim and just go right next to it. And I'm gonna mix these two colors together. I'm gonna use my bigger brush. I'm gonna mix these two colors and we're gonna experiment a little bit. 
when you mix these two colors, more cherry red than blue, you're going to get that maroonish, but it has a bit of a violet undertone. And you can see that here because when the dye separates and also that smoothing agent that's in there, when it separates, we're getting some of those, um, those violet blue undertones that are happening. And I dig it. I kind of like it. And I'm going to show you two ways. So we're going to just straight up mix today. So here is my cherry red. Look at how intense that color is. It is super intense. I'm going to start to bring over some of the blue. See how I'm only kind of going halfway over and bringing some of that blue in? Not using that whole bit of blue. So our concentration of color is more red than it is blue, just like I did with the um, the paint. So I clean off my brush, get it nice and clean. And then I want to start to show you what this is going to look like. Now, with working with dye inks, this is like a this is like a whole milk concentration here. I want to add more water to it to get it moving and get it juicy before I add it to my paper. So more water. This is more of like a, um, so whole milk. This is more of like a 2%, 2% milk. I'm going to come in with a little bit of a deeper concentration of this color. And then look at that. Look at that maroon. So this is more of a, um, this is more 2%. This is more skim. That is more of a whole milk concentration of it. But I am working from this palette to do this, to get this color. Loving it. Loving it. Okay. But when I start to paint with this color, so I've got a little mix of it here. Jesse just popped in. Hi, Jesse. Just came in thinking it was 11:30. Jesse, it was my. I totally boogered up the time. I apologize. I apologize at the top of the hour, and I even boogered it up with my email subscribers and sent it out and said 11:30. Um, one should wear their glasses when they're using when they're typing things. Really, my apologies. And it's not unusual to, for a Friday live to be at 1130 either. So my deep apologies for screwing up that time. Okay, so I am just going to go ahead in and then just start to kind of paint with this a little bit so that you can see this burgundy color. And I'm loving it. Loving it. Okay. Daisy girl popped in, getting ready for your son's graduation. Congra congratulations. It is graduation time. Okay, now I wet the paper and I'm coming in and I'm wetting, getting my pigment, getting my dye, and then I'm dropping that in. Now, this is generally the way I need to work with, with this paint, okay? So let's dive in. Anybody have any questions? Remember, if you have any questions along the way, let me know. If I add more blue to this mix, I am going to get purple. But the cherry red is so concentrated in red that I've got quite a bit of red here and I've got a little bit of blue here if I need to add it in. So I'm working with those two dye inks. Let's go ahead and dive in and start to paint. A little bit and see what we get. Now there's two ways that I you can approach this. You can paint the whole thing. Now that's what I did in this one. You can paint the whole flower in red and then add our blue in a wet into wet kind of action. And that's what I did with this but I'm gonna play with this a little bit. Let me go down to a smaller brush we're going to come in and I'm going to wet. Let's just see how this goes. We're going to do a wet into wet. I stamped out the big honkin floral in uh, obsidian. So it's not going to run because I've got water going. 
I'm going to take some of my mix and you can see that smoothing agent. So you see that smoothing agent that's in the ink. See how it puddles up a little bit. It almost looks a little bit like an alcohol ink. I'm going to drop this in and just kind of let the dye do its thing. And the reason why you want to work wet into wet is because once you start painting with your inks, it immediately sits right on the paper. So let me show you an example of that. So if I picked up, my brush is wet, my paper is dry, it immediately goes into the paper. And look, I'm working fast, I'm tr I can't really get it to move. So wet into dry gives you an immediate like hard line. So working wet into wet doesn't. So what I'm going to show you here is the blues in the dye are starting to separate a little bit. You can see I'm kind of coaxing it around a little bit, but I'm loving, I'm loving that maroon like color and see how as we move closer to the top, it gets lighter. I'm going to show you that. I'm kind of digging that. When I did it over here, you can see those violet overtones and undertones, and it's really dark and intense because I did a combination. I didn't do enough wet into wet over there when I did that one. So let's do it again. Let's come over here, and I'm literally just painting in my petal with water. Then I'm going to come back here, grab some of my dye. Might need a little blue. I'm just trying to be very conscientious of making sure I don't get purple by adding too much blue to that mixture because I really want to keep that maroon look. So I'm coaxing this color up and into the water. Peggy just said you make it look so easy. It is easy. It just takes a little bit of practice. But you can see how that color, I'm going to, this is our first layer. We're going to come in and we're going to glaze. We're going to get some more color in there. Um, hopefully, Cherie just shared that. Hopefully the explanations along the way really kind of break it down for you. Break it down even more. We've got that good mix going on over here and you can see that I can reactivate it. It's going to dry. The ink is going to dry pretty quickly, but you can re easily reactivate it with water. And look at what I did. I need to clean off my brush. I'm going to come in and paint this one. Paint this petal. I'm going to turn this a little bit. Paint this petal. I've already pre die cut this flower out, by the way just to save us a little time so we can focus on our water coloring. And I'm just going to pop that in and I'm working dark. My dark colors down here at the bottom of my petal and my lighter colors at the top. Now, as this color is drying, it's giving us a mixed kind of look to it. You can see how some of the um, blue in the blue denim is popping out. The dyes are separating, but that's okay. We're going to let it ride. Okay. Then we're going to come back and we're going to add another layer to it and add some intensity to it. Glazing. We're going to see what we get. It's kind of an experiment. Okay. I'm going to come in. I've got my brush again, clean brush, and I'm just going to paint in some water. Now the dye inks, when you're watercoloring with dye inks, they're going to dry pretty quick, but that's okay. They won't reactivate on your paper like a watercolor would. So keep that in mind. That's your difference. That's your differentiation between watercoloring with dye inks versus watercoloring with paint. They won't 
we won't be able to reactivate it. Like this is dry over here and I won't be able to reactivate it and um, get it to move. But I'm getting that first layer of that burgundy on there. Catherine, Catherine just popped in. Yes, about the um, about the replay because popping in a little bit late. That's okay. My fault. I screwed up the time. And I think Catherine, it was you, maybe I might be wrong last week, who shared the interest in learning about mixing up the maroons. If I'm wrong, let me know. If I'm right, let me know. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna get some water. And I'm just going to paint that petal. You can see some of that color is eking over into, into there. So I'm going to take some of my mix. Okay. And pop this in. Do, do, do. It's a little wet, so I'm going to take some of that back. Okay. And then I'm going to wet this side. Some of that color is just going to eke over. That's okay. Come in with some of my paint, my dye, and then just pop that in. Okay. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to have to mix up some more. I'm going to come over here and add my a little bit of water on that edge. Just kind of take what I've got here, that mix that I've made to get that maroon or burgundy. Just kind of let it do its thing in the water. Now, let's do this. these two top petals here. We're gonna concentrate our darker colors at the top of that petal. <laughs> Catherine said, yes, it was you. No worries, Catherine. Actually, I think all you missed was me talking about mixing up the maroons with pan, with paints. But um, you can catch that at that very beginning of the replay. You've got that concentration of the color at the top. And I'm just going to pull that down a little bit into the center there. I keep that, that darkness up there. Got a little bit too much water going here. So I'm just using my brush to kind of sop that up a little bit. Oh, you might hear the rain, friends, because it's just starting, it just started to downpour, which is lovely. The garden needs it. Okay, hi, Cheryl. You're not late to the party. I think I really screwed up with the time, friends. Okay, now. We have our first layer of our maroon burgundy colors mixing up the cherry red and the blue denim, which is more like an ultramarine. Now, what I want to show you is look at how the dye has separated and we get those, those violet undertones, but we definitely have a maroonish color flower. Here is my cherry red concentrated flower with a little bit of the maroon down here at the bottom. You can start to see that first layer of color that we put on is giving us that look. Now, we're going to do another layer. It's probably going to take two layers. I've got some of my blue here. You can see I need to mix up some more reds. Get a little more concentration of red. I'm going to take two dots one, two of my cherry red ring anchor. If you're using your um, pad, just like smash it down to get a larger concentration, a more concentration of red than you do blue. Okay. <laughs> oh. Everybody's got some sweet comments that you're all that you all look forward to seeing me. That's so sweet. Okay, here's my red. I'm adding some water to my red and just kind of getting this going. Look at the intensity of that red. It's juicy. All right, let's go in here. Okay, now I'm gonna come in and take some of my blue and just kind of squish it over. Squish over my blue. 
and mix in that blue to that red, but not so much that I get purple because that will happen. So my larger concentration in this mix is the red, adding in the blue. Let's do a little test to get my burgundy, maroonish light color, love. Okay, got a good mix. Got a good mix there. I'm gonna come back with my smaller brush. Now, this is dry. Well, sort of dry, except for that one little bluish right there. This is pretty dry, but you can see it's kind of faded back. It's kind of bloomed. Don't know how much I love it. My brush is wet. I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna pick up some of this pigment and I'm just gonna concentrate quite a bit of it at the bottom of the petal. Working quick because it's wet and my paper's dry. So I wanna tap, tap, tap it and get that moving up towards the top. So my paper was dry, but my brush was wet. And that's my second layer. So you can see that intensity of color is starting to happen but I am working relatively quickly to get that color in. It's wet, clean my brush real quick, and then tap, tap, tap that edge and just drag it out to that outer edge. Oh, I love it. Look at that intensity of color. I'm loving this. Now, let's do it again. I'm gonna come over here we're working quick, I'm working quick. And this technique is called glazing. I just call it layering, working quickly. Everything is so wet. Moving that color around that edge, tap, tap, tap. Got a little bit of water, drawing it out to the outer edge. Now look at our maroons coming to life. Okay, so I see some questions. Did I miss some questions? Daisy girl, it's cherry red and blue demonine. Yep. Catherine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's cherry red and blue denim inks that, sh that I'm using. Yes. Cherry red and blue denim to create this maroons. Okay. Coming in. But remember, if the concentration of color in that mix is really more red. So I say five parts red to one part water, but that sounds like you're mixing up some like cleaners, right? Or vinegary cleaners or something. So more concentration of red than you have blue. That's why I have like a little bit of blue here and I just move it into my red as I see I need it. All right, coming in, my brush is wet, paper's dry adding a real intense concentration of that color right there, working quickly, cleaning my brush, tap, tap, tapping that edge and drawing it out. So our concentration of our burgundy color is down here in the lower part of our petals and the upper part of our petals are lighter. Just to kind of add to the realism there for the flower. I'm going to pull a little bit more blue over here to, to work on this petal right here. Did I already do that petal? I did. Maybe I didn't. I already did that petal. Okay, so we're going to work on this petal. Working quickly. Tap, tap, tap it out. Oh, I added too much water there and I'm going to create a little bloom. So let's just go in and course correct. Add a little bit of a paper towel there. You can see how I, I bloomed it a little bit. So we can add a little more color to kind of bring back that intensity. Now, one of the beautiful things about this burgundy maroonish mix with our dye inks is that we're going to get some of those violets that are going to pop. And I had shared that before. The blue, when the dye separates, we're going to get some of those bluish violet looks that are going to happen as this dries. And it's starting to happen right here a little bit. 
Now I want to take a little bit of this concentration. I don't think I need to mix up another color and just kind of hit the top of this petal working really quickly, keeping it, keeping it moving, clean off my brush, tap, tap, tap those edges with a clean brush just to kind of make that blend happen between here and here. Oh, loving that. Loving it. All right, let's do that again here and here. Okay, we're right here. We're coming around. I'm working kind of quick. Cheryl just, yeah, Cheryl just shared. She loves the richness. I do too, and it's sort of an unexpected surprise with what you're going to get from mixing the dyes together. So I would encourage you, or let me know in the comments if we want to do a, a, some more, what I'm calling Craft Your Joy Lab experiments, mixing colors, and kind of me showing you the difference between the dye inks and the paints. Because when we're making our card projects, we're working with dye inks, right, for our stamping. But we can also work with paints. Now I'm gonna let that dry, but look at the look at that beautiful maroon color. Oh, Catherine just asked a question. How did you know a bloom was happening before the edges got formed? Um, great question. I'm gonna pop that question up, Catherine. So, and I'm gonna pop on to the screen a little bit. Let's see if I'm I'm not even in the screen. So hello. So this is how I knew. I saw a droplet of water pop from my um, from my brush and I started to see some of the blooming like whooshing happen. So I wanted to kind of prevent that. Normally I love that because that's what watercolor is all about, that watery look. But I wanted to kind of prevent it here from happening because it was going to give me that, that spot. So I took my, I took just that little tiny bit of tissue in there just to kind of sop it up. It like totally wicked it up. So I hope that helped um, answer your question. Super fun. Okay. Um, okay. I am digging the way this is looking. We're going to let this dry. And I'm going to move on to the card. So I have a couple things already pre-done. I have my... Oh, I'm really loving. Oh, you know what? Before we do that, friends, I need to do the greens. <laughs> Didn't I forget that last week? I totally forgot to do the, like the bottom part of the, um, totally forgot to do the bottom part of the flower where we could see the greens. Cheryl just said, yes, more on mixing colors. Good. That's super fun. All right. I'm going to grab some of this green gold color. What do I have here? Sap green too. I don't have enough water going here. Let's just do a quick mix of that. And I'm just going to straight up paint this green gold green. I could also have used my grass green. You could use your grass green dye ink. I'm just getting that in there. I'm kind of letting it do its thing. Okay, just pop that in there. While we're on the topic of Lisa screwing up times for the live, friends, I will let you know that I will be going live next week on um, th Thursday. Yes, I will be going live on Thursday because um, we will be heading out for a family vacation soon. So I wanted to kind of give everybody a little bit of a heads up. I'm going to let this dry, but I want to show you, I'm resisting the urge to add another layer in here, but look at what's happening right in here. See how the colors are separating a little bit and it's giving us that speckly like look that's granulation that happens with pan with paints, but it also happens with dyes because the dyes separate from each other. Because I mix those two colors together, blue, denim, and red, they mix, they will separate from each other and they will give you some really funky effects. So I'm going to resist the urge 
to add more to this. And let's just go ahead and let that dry completely before we decide if we're going to add any more to it. Now, I've got the big honkin' balloon, and I want to add just two blooms on my card base here. I'm going to do that with the cherry red because it's going to give us some contrast between our darker maroons and our lighter, like more vibrant, what we expect from a red. I want to share, I'm going to ink this up. Now, cherry red in the Gina K line will stain your stamp. It won't affect your stamping into the future, but it will stain your stamp. So if that bothers you, consider that. I'm going to do a little stamp right here, an outline of the stamp there. And I'm also going to pop one up here because our bloom is going to be down here. And this is just some straight up stamping with our cherry red. Okay, let's pop this up here. And it's okay that they've overlapped because I'm going to show you, you can get this kind of clean, but you can see that it's stained, but that's okay. I feel like, you know, it's a well-loved stamp. It gets a lot of use. Love it. Okay, now, before I move forward, I am going to adhere this to this because I have a tendency to, like, do all of my layers and then I'm adhering. So I've got my Gina K ink. All righty. Let's just go ahead and add my Gina K ink. My Gina K glue. Let's just get a little glue on there. Gluey, gluey. I've got a little pin in here. Oh my goodness, I can't see. Okay. Now, my jelly bean green is cut to that A2 sized card. Just popping that on there, really easy breezy. And I used the scallop die from the Master Layouts. You guys have watched me long enough to know that um, <laughs> I love that die. It's kind of a standard for me to use. Okay, now I'm going to come back. This is still a little bit wet, but I don't want to heat set it. I'm going to let it ride. Now... Let's just talk about the differences between the colors. So look at that. This is cherry red, and then this is that color mix. So we're getting it definitely getting a different kind of look. And I'm gonna have this come off the bottom here. Let's see. Do I have here we go? Question. Catherine has a question. Will all the colors separate when mixed or for example, the light up blues will separate less. So Catherine, the colors will separate and with the dye inks and that's, they will separate a little bit. Now each ones are going to be very different. These are two intense blues. This is an intense blue and a really super intense um, red. And because I was also using the reinkers for the red, it is definitely intense. They are going to separate a little bit. Whenever you're using blue and red, they're going to separate even more um, because when they come to get the, the dyes are just going to, um, it's sort of like with pan paints. There's extra pigment in it, extra dye in it, and they're going to separate. Now, every color isn't necessarily going to do that. But these darker colors in the line are going to do that because we're forcing them. I'm forcing them to mingle together and be friends. And they they kind of are thinking about it. It's sort of like, look at the look at the way it's starting to look here. They also have that smoothing agent in them. Gina K Designs inks have a smoothing agent in them that really helps it be super smooth when it dries on your paper. So that was my long roundabout way of answering that question, wasn't it? Okay, I'm going to pop this in here. 
and I'm going to have this come off the bottom a little bit. I'm going to go back in and add some more greens. And have that come off the bottom. We're going to flip this over and just clip it. Clip it off. Just gives it a little extra something. I actually want to come in. I'm going to take a little bit of that grass green. And I'm going to paint with it. I'm just going to drop some of that grass green in the bottom here. Just to add that green that I used was a green gold. So it was, had a little bit of yellow in it. I want this green to be a little more intense and a little darker. So let's go ahead and drop that in. Let that be. Okay. Now I've got two, these three little pieces of leafery. This came together, this card came together really quickly, mainly because we don't have a ton going on. We've got this color, you know, our watercolor floral here. And then we've got our um, our line art version just to add a little bit of contrast to the card. And the fact that this is in black and we're going to do the sentiment in black also helps add a little contrast. Now, this little pop of leafery, I'm just going to tuck these in. This just adds a little whimsy to the top of the blooms. It also adds a little bit more. Let's pop this one right here. It also draws your eye out a little bit to our outer edge with our jelly bean green. Catherine has a follow-up question. Ah, oh, this is a good question. All right, Catherine, I'm going to pop that one up and I'm going to answer that one. I'm going to pop that question up. Let's just pop this little piece of leafery in right here. So we've got that like little bit of whimsy going. Let's pop that right there. I'm going to pop Catherine's question up and pop one to answer it. Okay. So Catherine's follow-up question was, if you add gouache for an opaque color, will the color still separate? No, they won't. So if I added a little bit of white to this mixture, and it what it will do is it'll start to make it a little bit on the pinky side okay because we're adding white to it um, and opaque watercolor to it so you're going to have to add a little bit more red in a little bit more blue in to try to get back to that maroon but that white gouache is going to kind of act as a little bit of a binder and it's going to hold it together if i had some i don't we're going to do that on another tutorial We'll do that on another tutorial and I'll cover that. Um, okay. But it will work and I, I can't wait to see what happens. You should experiment with it. Okay, let's go ahead and let's go back to my card here. And now I'm going to pop in my sentiments. So let's see. We've got showers of blessings to you. Let's go ahead and... Oh, boogers. Just remembered something I didn't do. But we're going to go ahead and do it. Let's see, I, boog I didn't booger something up, but I was about to. Okay, let's go ahead and I'm going to pop this sentiment. I'm going to nest it around that bloom. Just inking it up with some obsidian. And I'm going to nest it in like right here. Hopefully it's straight. I'm just eyeballing it. Looking pretty good. Showers of blessings to you. I love that sentiment. Okay, now, here's what I want to do. We're going to take the detail flower stamp, and I should have did that before I popped it in here, but I didn't. And we're going to just gently tap it in with some of the cherry red, and it's going to give us some detail in the floral just kind of lining it up just gently popping it in it's going to give us some detail in the floor I really could have done it again see the detail let's do it again and it adds as an as acts as another layer but it also oh boy 
It could go either way. <laughs> All right, we added some of that detail back in there. It brings, it kind of hides, it masks some of that separation, which is fine. But I'm digging this, I'm digging the way this looks, but here's what I wanna do. I am not resisting the urge to add a little bit more color back in here. So I wanna come back in down here on my bottom and adding another layer and doing like another little glazing layer. I'm gonna pop this this way. Do a little tap, tap, tap. This would be optional. So I'm just kind of going back in and adding a little bit more because I want it to be a little more intense. And I think it's going to make a difference. I also want to show you something that's happening on this palette. Tap, tap, tap. Bring a little bit up in this big petal. That level, that detail really did help. But look at that level of intensity that's happening down there. So I'm really getting a little bit more. This little bloom right here, I'm not digging it. So I want to add a little something to it, to the tips. Bring it down. Tap it out. A little something more to the tip there. And I think I want to add a little something more to the tip there. So this glazing, this layering is also jacking up that luminosity a little bit. Oh, I got a little bit of that. Mm. Anyway, I'm loving it. I'm loving the way this looks. Let's go ahead. We're going to let that dry. We're going to add some sequins. I have some Emerald City sequins. I'm just going to add a little bit more green. Kind of trailing up and off a little bit. I tell you, this was a, quite an experiment. Now I'm bringing up to show you, Catherine, this will help answer your question too. Look at that separation happening. So the dye is drying and it kind of gets a little bit flaky and it separates a little bit. So that's why we're kind of working kind of fast um, with this as well. Cheryl just asked a question. Do you, do the colors dry back when using inks as they do with paints? Yes, they do. They definitely dry back. That's why we did these three layers. But they are also a little bit more vibrant in that first dry back. So they do dry back a little bit when we're painting with them because we are adding water to it and watering them down. But they definitely look different than when you're using paints because paints are made with pigment. Where's my tool? Here we go. Paints are with pigment and inks are with dye. But you can get that luminosity through the glazing, the layering. Oh, you don't want to stay down. Stay down. There we go. Popping that little Emerald City. I like this little Emerald City. They've got that green in them and they've got a little... A little touch of gold that makes them super, super cute. So Cheryl, also to like answer, look at that intensity of color versus that layer, which has like one like pass of the color. So it's a lot less vibrant um, than it is down here. So we've got that gradation of color from dark to, to light. Daisy. Daisy Girl just said you could also add the lines with a red pen. Oh, yeah. You could totally add them with the red pen. Like, I could go in and add some more red pen if I wanted to. So here's our original. A little more intense of a red color. A little more maroon. So a lot different. They both came out so good, though. Loving that. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to grab my glasses. We made it. We actually made it in an hour this week, friends. Holy smokes, we totally made it in an hour. So, oh, I hope you got a lot out of this tutorial. It was super fun, and I was playing so much and experimenting so much to try to see what happens when we use our dye inks and we're mixing with them. Last week, I did a lot of mixing with um, Innocent Pink and that yellow, and we got the 
uh, peach, peachish tone. I also had posted something in the Gina K Designs group about using those two colors together. So super, super fun. So, okay, friends, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, I know we had a little bit of a screw up with the time, but I will be coming in live next week a little bit earlier. So it'll be Thursday. Um, and I will get that information out. If you're on my email list, you will get that in your email um, on Wednesday. Um, it looks like it's probably going to be like 11, 11, 11 o'clock on Thursday. Um, but if anything changes, I'll be sure to let everyone know. So thanks so much for joining me. Please don't hesitate to jump in and get on my email list if you are new to the chat and you're new to the lives. I send out an email once a week kind of letting you know of all the things that are happening and it comes right to your inbox so you know and it has the link and all the things that we do. Also, I have a free community at my, in my Craft Your Joy classroom where I share a lot of uh, some other content. I post the lives there so you can watch them there as well. And I also have other free content that I share there. So uh, if you're interested, I would encourage you to take a peek at it. All of the links for the subscribing and for the community are down below in the description. I'm seeing everybody sharing. Looking forward to watching from the beginning. Love how you teach. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you so much. Um, and big thanks. Learned a lot about mixing and glazing too. This was a really great color. I'm really kind of surprised um, because the nature of dye inks is very different from paints. So that's why we did both in that in our watercolor tutorial in the beginning. So if you came in late, catch the replay because there was quite a bit of color mixing in the very beginning. Okay, friends, I'm sending you into the weekend to craft your joy. I hope you have a wonderful weekend where you are, and I will see you next week. Thanks so much for supporting me, and thanks so much for joining me today. Bye, friends.